Hi, I'm Ross Barefoot. I'm the SEO strategist at Horizon Web Marketing in Las Vegas. Now I'm here today to talk to you about Google's fantastic Search Console, which is an essential tool not only for SEO, but also for digital market research. But before we get started, I do have a favor to ask. Hit the subscribe button down below, and if you find this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you do that, Google will show our videos to more people who need them. So now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the Search Console. Search Console is free, but that doesn't mean you get it without paying anything. What do I mean by that? Well, the Search Console requires some knowledge and patience to set up properly. It can even get a little bit frustrating at times. If you're a seasoned technical SEO, you undoubtedly have done this and you can move on. But what about the rest of you digital marketers or even you business managers or owners? who want to dig into Search Console's surprising data insights. You may have watched one of my other webinars or classes and seen all the good stuff you could get out of it. Well, this video will give you the basics of how to get started with Google Search Console, especially this mysterious process of verifying that you actually have a right to use your website with Search Console. So let's get started. So let's get right into the heart of this presentation, getting started with Google Search Console. We're not going to do an in-depth tutorial as to how you can get what you need out of Search Console. This is basically just about setup, but we will talk a little bit about what Google Search Console is. How to add your website to it, or really how to add it to your website. How to verify a WordPress site, and that's going to be our example just because WordPress is the dominant platform and there's different ways of verification. So we're going to use WordPress for our example. And then we'll also talk about where to find instructions for other verification methods. First of all, what it is. Well, the Search Console was designed to help webmasters make their sites more friendly to Google and also to allow webmasters to give some limited feedback to Google about their sites and to update Google about certain things that would help both parties. Also, and very importantly, the Search Console alerts webmasters to problems Google is having in being able to access the site. And that's, of course, very important if you want your site to show up in search. Now, for all these things, notice how we use the word webmaster over and over again. So, the natural question that follows, does that mean this tool is just for webmasters? In a word, no, it doesn't. And that's the reason for being able to give non-tech business people some sort of an idea how they can set it up as well. The reason is because the Search Console shows you what people were searching on that brought them to your website. And in turn, what that does is gives you insight into the wants of your audience and into the way your targeted consumers are thinking, which is, of course, very valuable to any business or any organization. Plus, it will show you where your website is not connecting with searchers who may say it in search results, who will see it but then choose not to visit you, and it will give you some insight as to why and how to take action on that. And it can do that by giving you these ideas for changing your marketing messages to perform better online. But in order to use it, you do need to set it up. Now here's what you're going to need. First of all, very basic, you need a Google account. If you have Gmail, you have a Google account. If you're uncertain, go to accounts.google.com and try to log in with whatever you have. And sometimes even a non-Gmail address will be tied to a Google account. If you don't have one, go ahead and create one that you can use. Now the other component of this is you need a website that you control. And presumably, you have a website that you either own or manage and therefore that you have control or that you can gain control over. In order to show that you have control over the website and that the whole point of this is Google wants you to prove that you are authorized to act upon a website before you start using Search Console with it. And you can do that in a variety of ways. Now you need full access to any of the following, not to all of the following, to any. One of the things could be full access to the Google Analytics account that is running on the website, assuming that one is. The other is a Google Tag Manager account. The other is if you have an FTP connection to your website's document route. Now here we're getting a little techy, so bear with me because it's not, we're not going to stay in this tech realm if you're starting to get lost here. 
You also, and here's another technical term, you may understand this, you may not. Also, if you have cPanel access for your website or equivalent, then you're good to go. Finally, and here we come back to the example we're using, if you have WordPress and you have administrative access, that means you can go to your WordPress, log in, see the dashboard, and act upon it as an administrator, then you're good to go. So let's get started. Log into your Google account and then go here, search.google.com slash search hyphen console. Now, I'll warn you, if you are not logged into Google and you type search console with a slash after it, at least as of today, you're going to get an error. So try to type it in exactly as I have it up here. If you already have a GSC account set up for any website, you're going to get one screen, but if you don't have GSC set up, you'll get another. And the reason I give you the difference is because some people sometimes have access to Google Search Console, maybe that their webmaster set up or um, an administrative assistant or something, they don't even realize it. So if you already have GSC set up for at least one domain, you log into your Google account and you go to that address that I gave you, it's going to look something like this. And you'll notice that it has that word overview at the top, that's going to be the screen that greets you. If, however, you're logged into your Google account, but you've never set up a GSC property, in other words, a website, it's going to look like this. Now, one final bit of knowledge, and that is that there are usually several versions of any website. I'm going to tell you this information, then later I'll show you how we're going to use it very shortly. Uh, for example, it might start like this, http colon slash slash mywebsite.com. Or it might be the same thing, but with HTTPS, which is more and more the dominant form because it's secure. Although you may also have either the non-secure form without the S with a www, or the secure form with the S and with a www. Or you might have something really funky like a subdomain. For example, shop.mywebsite.com or something even farther into left field, www dot shop dot mywebsite dot com. Those are called subdomains. The dub dub dub, the shop, all those are subdomains. Now all of these examples I have up here, they all have a common domain. That domain is mywebsite.com. So please remember that terminology. The domain is that portion, the, the portion to the left and to the right of the last period. Now, there's a new choice in setting up Google Search Console, and this is new as of March 2019, the month I'm making this video. And now you've got these two little boxes when you go to Search Console. This is very, very new. And one says domain, the other says URL prefix. Well, if you choose the box on the right, which is the one that's highlighted with kind of a bluish gray, you need, and notice I have you need in quotes, you need to set the following up separately. That is, all those variants that I showed you before. Each one would have to be set up in a separate process, theoretically, if you wanted to get data on each of them. Now, typically, you don't really need to because often you'll get everything you need by setting up your primary version of your domain. And I'll show you in a second a real easy way to figure out which one is the primary version. Now, if you choose the box on the left, the one that says domain, it's really cool because it'll set up all those other versions right away and you only need to set up mywebsite.com. So why don't we do that? Well, setting up the box on the left is more difficult. So I'm going to be showing you how to set up using the box on the right. We're not going to set up every variant of your domain. You know all those ones, dub, 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 shop, and so on and so forth. We're not going to be setting all those up. We're just going to be setting the primary one up. Let's move forward, and we're going to be using a demonstration domain that I often use for these particular videos that I produce. It's called artisansofcolorado.com. And now is when we break out of our PowerPoint slides and we go over to an actual web browser, and we're going to take a look at it here. Uh, this is one screen you also might get if you go to Search Console and you are not logged into any Google account. Now, First of all, remember I said we need to find the dominant version of your domain. And our domain is Artisans of Colorado. The easiest way to do that is type the domain 
up at the top. Okay, you see where I have it right here highlighted artisansofcolorado.com. I haven't typed in www or http or anything like that and hit the enter key and now see what it changes to. See how it changed up here to https colon slash slash www.artisansofcolorado. That should be the primary version of the domain and that's the one that we're going to add to Google Search Console. Let's go back to the screen. Remember where we had the two choices? We've got domain on the left and see how the example is just the domain word.com or .org or whatever. So let's go over here to the one that I told you was easier to set up, the URL prefix, and we're going to paste in our website address, that primary URL, and then we're going to click continue. It's going to check and see if we are verified on this. So bear with it a second. If it comes up to this screen, it's telling me I need to verify ownership, prove it. They're saying prove it that you are have the rights to see data about this particular website. Now there's a number of different choices here. And the, the one that they recommend is not the one we're going to choose right now. We're going to choose the one that would be easiest if you are able to log in to a WordPress installation. That's going to be this choice right here where it says HTML tag. So I've gone and clicked on it. It opens up in this accordion. Now it says here copy the meta tag below and paste it into your site's home page. It should go into the head section before the first body section. Well how in the world am I going to do that? And that's what I'm going to show you and this is why you need access to the WordPress dashboard. Typically if you log into a WordPress site usually you go to a location called WP Admin this is not always the case, but for most WordPress installations, that's the default. We're going to hit enter, and it's going to ask you for a login. If you've logged into your WordPress installation, you're familiar with what this looks like. And so now I've logged into this demo site. And on the back side, I'm going to navigate over here to this left choice called Plugins. And this is why you need to have administrator access, because we're going to get this job done by adding a plugin. So here we are at plugins and what I'd like you to do is go up here to where it says add new. And at that point we're going to search for a particular plugin called Meta Tag Manager. And we'll take a look and it's the first choice. Now if you already by some chance have this installed to your WordPress site it will not give you the choice to install it again. It'll just alert you to the fact like over here it says active. If I had it installed it would tell me that but I don't. Most of you will not have this installed either so we're going to click install now. And once it's done with its installation it's going to ask me to activate it which I do. All right, it's going back to our plugins here. Now we can look down, make sure that it's done. There it is, Meta Tag Manager. So this has been added to WordPress, and now it's going to add a choice when I go and edit the home page of the website. So I'm clicking on Pages. All right, and I'm going to look for the home page of the site. Once I find the home page to the site, I'm going to go ahead and click on that in order to open it up in the editor. And so now it's telling me, it's giving me this welcome dialog I'm going to get rid of. You probably will not see that. And we're going to scroll down the home page here. You'll notice down here at the bottom we now have Meta Tag Manager gives us an option to add a meta tag. So let's go back and see what we need to know from Google's instructions. So here again, we are at the HTML tag verification. Now notice meta says name equals Google Site Verification. So we're going to go ahead and copy that part. We'll go back over to where it says to add meta tag. And now I'm going to click Add. Uh, the one other thing that I didn't point out, and I, I'll go back to point it out, is notice that the type of meta tag here is called a name tag. See where it says meta name equals. And that's going to matter because right here in Meta Tag Manager, it'll ask us to choose a type. First choice is name. And for the name, this is where we plug in the Google Site Verification. 
Now, in addition, we've got one other field. If we go back, we'll see that there's an encrypted key here that's unique to your website that Google gives you. And now we'll go back and we are going to paste that in under this content attribute. And now we should be able to click update. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the one thing that I normally do to make sure that this has taken is I'm going to show you very quickly how to go to the home page of your site. And we'll just go here to Artisans of Colorado visit site. So this is the home page of the site. And um, you might um, not be familiar with this, but there's a way to view what's called the HTML source code of the site. On a Mac, you do Mac U. And on Windows, you would do Control U. And I just did the wrong one here. So let me try that again. Control U. And we get all of this lovely HTML code here. I don't want to have to look through everything, so I'm going to do Control F, which means find on page. And I'm going to type in meta name equals. And I'm going to go to each of these and see, OK, did my tag, did a tag like the one we're talking about, be installed? Now notice here it says meta tag manager, meta name equals Google site verification, content equals. I'm going to trust to my copy and paste that this is correct. Now let me go back to Google Search Console and let's keep our fingers crossed and click on the Verify button. And wait just a moment. Notice ownership verified. Now it says to stay verified, don't remove the meta tag from your site's homepage. So if your developer goes in and removes that plugin, you might stop having access to Search Console, but it won't destroy any of your data. You can put the meta tag back in there and have access again. So once you're done, then you can click on Go to Property. And now you notice we've got this uh, overview up here at the top left. OK, so now we've got an, a way to be able to um, get done what we need to get done in Google Search Console. That, again, is the WordPress verification using the HTML tag. Now, this is one of those things where there's a lot of different ways to skin this particular um, cat. So um, what I'm going to do is at the end of this video, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the other methods that are used. But that's it for getting a site verified, for getting a WordPress site verified using one of a total of five different methods that are available to you in Google Search Console. How'd that go for you? If anything went by too fast, well, at least this is a video, so you can pause it and review it. Now, remember how I said that I was showing you a common way to verify WordPress, a WordPress website in Search Console? Well, the truth is that method doesn't always work, and it won't work if you don't have a WordPress website. Google provides for that. There are four other verification methods. If you want to learn about the others, check out our Google Search Console introductory course in the Horizon Web Marketing Academy. Otherwise, it's just too much to go into in one YouTube video. So check that out. That's it for now. I'm Ross Barefoot with Horizon Web Marketing. Thanks for watching this video. Bye for now.